Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of RimWorld. No expansions, no DLC. Uh, we are also on 1.3 over here. And uh, I've actually, I haven't recorded this in a couple of days, but I've been playing on my own some more hardcore builds. And when I came up, it came back in here, um, I thought, you know what, because 1.4 is coming out later, ooh, that's annoying, um, in, you know, a little while later this month or next month, um, I thought, well, okay, well, let's work towards finishing this run. Um, and for that, I think I'm going to go for the spaceship victory because it's, well, we do need a, an AI core, but it's probably the one we can do the fastest, I think, from this point. I'm not sure, but that's probably what I'm going to do. But anyway, so I'm like, okay, I should really, you know, kind of like knuckle down and, and try to do this, uh... As, as, as well as possible. We've been a little loosey-goosey with some things, but actually, overall, I'm kind of surprised about the state. We've got eight people. We're sitting at 100k wealth, which is not, for, for a lot of my games, especially since we do even have individual bedrooms and things are floored, that's not as much wealth as I would fear. Of course, we're not playing on super high difficulty, right? We are sitting on, uh, oh, I do have it set to losing is fun. I don't remember when I did that. Okay. Because I know when we started, we went with sort of a middling difficulty, but I guess we cranked it up to losing is fun at this point. Um, but yeah, we got mortars, we got decent weapons, although I did experiment with chain shotguns instead of heavy SMGs, and I think they do do great against unarmored things. Um, and now I'm saying, oh, well, we'll upgrade everyone to assault rifles because I like the range engagement. Uh, one of the things I hadn't quite realized is that um, range accuracy falls off sort of exponentially. So the fact that the assault rifles is much better range than heavy SMGs, I hadn't realized doesn't really mean that much um, until it turns out that you get quite a lot of shooting skill. So people have a few different like rules of thumb that they use for like how much shooting skill before you move from something with the heavy SMG or in our case, chain shotgun range, because that's what we have right now. Some people say around 12, some people say around 15. Uh, but in any case, you, you, people generally feel that you need fairly high shooting skill for to, to make long range engagements kind of worthwhile. Now we do have a few people with decent shooting skill. What I'm actually considering is like sort of reorganizing my list here based on order. Like Fob's got a 10, which is pretty good. Vorda nine's not bad. Darcy's got a 13. So we could do this just because it'll keep it a little easier in our heads, sort of shooting skill. All right, you've got another nine over there. And yeah, Paolo's quite poor and Honey is a pacifist. So Darcy at a 13, I think could definitely use the assault rifle, and we've already built them, or even the sniper rifle. Uh, but we do have that, although we have a good chain shotgun. One of the things is that weapon quality really, really, really makes a big difference. Uh, and so, in general, higher quality weapon just wins out over lower quality weapon. So Darcy's already got the assault rifle. Fob's currently doing the sniper thing. I'm going to replace you with an assault rifle. Vort has got the assault rifle right now. But I don't know if I want that. I'm just checking the lower skill ones. Okay, they all got chain shotguns. Vort, I think I'm going to have you go back to a chain shotgun. Ideally, I would have gone to a heavy SMG if we were doing that. But this is a good chain shotgun. And it'll compensate for the fact that... I mean, you're not bad at a 9. I suppose if someone's a careful shooter, they'd also be a good candidate. Maybe for a long range thing. Um... But, uh, and actually could be exceptionally good as a sniper. Again, with a sniper rifle, it's not about raw DPS. It's about super long range engagement. All right, so Labre and NG are now lovers and want to share a bed together. Um, oh, there we go. They already did it. I was going to say, as long as one of them is assigned to a double bed, I believe they will pair up. Um, and yeah, the other thing too is like I'm building all these double beds and as it turns out, oh, this is a poor double bed. So I'll deconstruct you anyway, because that's a pretty easy decision to make. Um, as it turns out, I always thought that double beds were slightly higher stats for people, but they're exactly the same as single beds and they take more material. It's easier to like group them together and they are worth a little bit more sort of wealth for the bedroom, but they're also more worth a little bit more wealth overall. Ground penetrating scanner done. I think I was setting that up because I was like, well, well I might need a little bit more uranium for the armor or gold for things, but... I don't know if I'll, I'm happy that it's available, but I don't think I'm going to rush to get them set up right now anyway. Um, pulse charge munitions, the charge rifles are amazing, but uh, we are not like we are not sitting on infinitude components at this point. So I don't think that's the move to do that. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I want to grab before I go to Starship Basics. I don't think we need to set up hydroponics or weather here is pretty good. I'm not having too much of an issue with that. I could just unlock beer brick brewing because we might just want to do a little bit of it because it keeps our people happier. Although I think, do we have psychite brewing? 
Cycoid Brewing, yeah, right over there. I don't know if we've set that up, though, so let's take a look. All right, we're going to get started on the Starship Starflight Basics. Uh, where's my cooking setup in here? Again, it's been it's been a few days since I've played. So if I look over here, first of all, I think... Uh... Okay, I'm going to bring down some of these numbers. I think if we are going to do a caravan and it's super long, just having like 20 package survival meals is going to be fine. I forgot we're doing lavish meals for full buffs here. It's not as food efficient, but right, I had too much food sitting around. So yeah, we may as well do that. I'm going to lower the amount of fine meal cooking we do as well. Um, I'm going to try to keep like three or four per colonists, something like that. Or let's call it, let's, let's put in like 30 in here which is gonna be fine. And then, yeah, we'll keep the buffer of 10 simple meals if we get down there. Um, I would like to do the uh, the multi-count over here. Um, uh, better workbench mod lets you consider how many fine or lavish meals you've got before you cook the simple meals. Um, I could probably just suspend the simple meal job entirely, actually. It's a nice little safety buffer. Because if you run out of the things, because you need two different types of food to make lavish and fine meals. And if you only end up with one, then you have to make simple meals. But I don't like that it's, uh, yeah, I'll leave it on. You know what? Because I'm going to forget at some point. We're just going to starve to death. That's the thing. So we're, we're still overproducing, although I'm trying to bring those numbers down a little bit more under control. Um, well, one of the things I want to address, I talked about how I quite enjoy growing plants. Now, these are... These are disabled. We don't sow over here because we've got too much because we're doing the rich soil. Sorry, I said plants. I meant corn. Um, I like to grow corn because they're not very labor intensive. I do have to give a shout out to rice and maybe I should prioritize rice a little bit more in general because um, rice and corn and pot potatoes, well, assuming, ignoring, ignoring fertility and like rich soil and different things, um, the idea is that they should generate about the same amount of calories per tile overall. Um, potatoes don't take advantage of fertility. We've talked about it before. So it's a waste to plant fruit potatoes on rich soil or in hydroponics because they really don't benefit from it very much. I mean, it's not its not going to hurt them. You're just not gaining it for it. So with rich soil and hydroponics, um, you'd rather grow something that's more fertility sensitive. Corn and rice is 100%. Um, so the question is, which is which? I think in hydroponics, you can't grow corn uh, without mods. I think it's only rice. So you clearly want to do that here. And I've talked about, I like to do corn. Um, when I can because it, it has a long growing period. So it's a very it's not very labor-intensive The problem is so many bad things can happen to the corn before it finishes growing that there's there is an inherent risk over here I guess I stopped sowing this cotton plant. I think Do I want to make this a rice one because this would this would generate tons of food for us um, Rule of thumb that a, a lot of people use is about 10 plots of growing 10 tiles of growing per colonist uh, that's a, that's assuming sort of year-round growing or supplemented by something else, which in this case it is because we do have our cattle. Um, if you've got bad um, bad weather, like harsh winters and things, or you don't have as much meat as a backup, you're probably looking at about 15 per. Uh, so this is, in 1.4, it gives you the total number of tiles in the middle. So here we've got 80 tiles, which is 10 tiles per colonist as is if i were just convert this to rice uh with this corn it's a little overkill in fact this corn um is about the same size as this so this is also correct but i might want to do rice we have an infestation i'm sorry how are we getting the infestation there that's the wrong button is coming towards you. Is this just a random event? Because there's no overhead mountain over there. This is just a regular roof. And I thought infestations could only spawn under overhead mountain. Oh, this is real bad. Or real, real bad. Okay, let's get Angie out of there. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna recruit everyone. Including Honey, just so I know that she's not in the trouble spot. Angie, get out of there. Oh my god, they're digging up there, too. Is any of that... Uh, is this a overhead mountain pile? Oh no. That's the problem. I believe it was effectively spawning in this tile here, and then it spawns in an AoE, an area around it. This is an overhead mountain tile. 
Oh, this is going to be really, really quite poor. Okay, so these bugs are going to spawn. They're going to try to, like, chew their way through some of these walls. Um, okay, what I'm going to do... And it's probably not going to do enough. These heaters... I'm going to crank them up. To the max. Bring my people outside. Sorry, honey, you go over there. We might be able to cause these to overheat. The problem is it's not that... Um, it's cold outside. Now, they are going to try to smash their way through some walls just to make some space. They just naturally like to dig. Yeah, I don't think I can cause these guys to overheat, unfortunately. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Set up here. I don't have... I should probably get some properly organized melee pawns. Pop open this door. So that's going to pull some things over here. I think they'll insta aggro. I don't know. Go back a little bit. Can't help. Okay, as soon as they get hit, they're definitely going to be mad. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back to way... That's not a very good click. Oh, honey, sorry. I don't want to select you. I'm so sorry, honey. Yeah, it's not going the way I'm hoping. Oh. We'll reposition you afterwards. Oh, it could have, I could have left this door open. Hold on. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, good. It's mad. There you go. And the door's held open. Great stuff. No, no, no. Go here. Run. Run, Darcy. You're going to get shot by your friends. You know what? Just tuck into this doorway then. You're not going to be able to close the door behind you, unfortunately. But at least you can minimize how many things are attacking you at once. That was my mistake. I'm so sorry, Darcy. Okay. Um. Oh, you dropped your weapon. Did you lose an arm? No, you've just been very injured. Okay. I'm just... Darcy, just... Hide inside here, please. What the hell? Are they going towards Honey? No, they're just running around all over the place. Honey, just get inside here. This door is being left open. Where the hell are they going? Are they chewing up my batteries? I hope they explode and kill you. It's not a good... I can't really be set up for kiting here or anything. Yeah, we just have to hope that we're damaging them very quickly. Oh, this is awful. This is not what I wanted. But yeah, at least, I gotta say, the uh, chain shotguns are probably doing a great job right here, I think. I don't think they're super duper armored. Yeah, 27's not that much. Uh, random number. Yeah, over the armor rating. What's our penetration? I guess we go here for the chain shotgun. Yeah, it's only 14%. It does really bad against armored thing. Luckily, these things are not super armored. Okay, so there's still some things going around chewing here. Uh, let me turn off the roofing, because I can't see nothing. You're over here. You might be the last one. Oh, are you coming out now? Good. All right, Darcy, you're so hurt. Honey? Uh, you're consuming a meal. Oh, where the heck did that thing decide to go? Oh, it's over there. Oh, let me reset all these heaters. Whichever ones are still around. We're also shooting at the highs here, is what's going on. Which is okay, I guess. If they're just gonna. Oh, that was... you're still alive. I know there's a few wigglers over there. Oh, shoot, and there's you. God, this is a mess. Oh. No, oh, where are you going? Honey, run away! Run away, honey! 
Okay, good. You're not following them. I don't think it was aggroed anymore. Dead. Okay. I'm hoping none of my people are bleeding to death currently. Yeah, they'll probably pass up before that happens. Ooh, hang on. Alright, I'm hoping that's the last one. Um, I don't remember if they show up under wildlife. We do have a, some living... Oh, no, those are mega sloths, sorry. Yeah. Uh, mega spider. No, I think that's it. Okay. Everyone unrecruit here. Jeez, we're going to need some medical treatment. And yes, Kiwi was killed. Uh, we can... I can't put a finish off on you? Kind of annoying. Well, Darcy's the hunters. That's not going to happen. Tell you what, Bob, come over here. And just shoot that. A good opportunity to train your shooting some more. I think that's the last of the Wigglers. Now, what we do have to do is... Um, we have to clear out these hives. I should actually... Really should get a chain shotgun person to do this. But, I do want Fob to keep working on their skills, so why not? And more hives over here. Because they will spawn more. It does take a while before they spawn. Okay, I think that might be it. I'm going to allow everything. All the jelly here. Um, some of the... So, when you have this selected, it reconstructs things. It does um, set certain things to forbidden for the reconstruction. I don't know what the logic... It has to do when, when they get destroyed by enemies. The logic being maybe you don't want a constructor running right up there. But some of these got forbidden, some of them didn't. I don't actually know why the game decides one versus the other. Maybe it depends on whether someone is, like, standing... An enemy is standing right in the tile, or... I don't know. Like, I'm sure there is a logic. I just don't know what it is. So we'll need that to be rebuilt. Insect jelly is interesting. Um, any raw food always has a chance of making you sick. But uh, insect jelly is delicious. It never rots. I believe it's considered delicious and people are happy to eat it. I might be wrong about that. It didn't actually say anything. It gives you some recreation. There you go. It's kind of fun. You have an infection. That's Darcy. Are you going to... Yeah, okay. You're going to go rest. So I do have bed rest set over here. Um, did we do anything funky with medicine? No, we still allow everyone to have the best medicine. Yeah, I'm not really microing that. Really, I kind of should uh, set this so that um, uh, normally we're not using strong medicine for like regular in little injuries. But I'm always worried that I'll forget and someone who really needs help will be there. But I guess it actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I could do that now. I could say... Um, I'm not going to prevent anything because we, we should be good on herbal. I'm going to do this, but Darcy, who's currently infected, I'm going to say, you know what? Literally is the best. We don't have any uh, glitter world anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. But I suppose, just to be sure, as I should say, industrial at best, which is just regular medicine. So someone should be going to treat Darcy here. Worst case scenario, I guess we cut off that foot. I mean, you're already kind of balanced for immunity, which is kind of good. Being in a hospital bed helps a lot. And yeah, the Vitals Monitor increases the immunity gain rate as well. 88% quality is a pretty good tend. So I think you're going to be fine now. Yeah, you're ahead on that. I think if you're staying in bed and you're still getting regular treatments, uh, we can probably put you back there. Um, these power brownouts are annoying. Well, we did lose... We did lose some power, and actually this is not connected to the grid. So one of the reasons I've said it's often not a good idea to have your grid actually route through your electronic devices. Because if one of them gets destroyed, it gets cut off, which is what's happened here. Um, our best constructor, so Fob, for example. Oh, you're resting. I'm sorry, I can't get you to rest. I can't allow this. I need to get you to work on this power conduit over here. ASAP, please. And yeah, we might want to get some more geothermals hooked up as well. Here, okay, hauling components and then taking panoxyclin. I was going to say, I'm going to have to do this one at a time. Because he's going to keep trying to interrupt himself with something else. Okay, these two devices are back on the grid now. Okay, and yeah, our power is definitely fine now. All right, we lost the battery as well, which didn't help. But the big thing was just losing the grid. Um... Oh. Oh, yeah, see? That connection there got broken as well. So the geothermals are not coming into the base. Actually, they, this is all disconnected. So, yeah, we'll, we'll set up some redundant lines... For the future here. Mm, yeah, that ain't great. Okay, well, I'm gonna run the cable just like that as well. Just a little redundant with this one. I could have 
connected up over there, but there you go. Uh, it's not like power cables take a ton of steel. Area reveal. Can we just mine out something? Oh, just the other side here. Yeah, we're mining out that silver. Vort's heading way out here to dig at the uranium ore. Now, one of the other things I'm going to do, since I'm going to enter slightly more serious mode, is um, our zone over here. I'm going to make a new zone, um, which is going to be the allowed work zone. So what I'm going to do for this, this is because uh, I want to minimize how much walking all of our people are doing. So the allowed work zone is going to be, you know, certainly everything inside of our base and some of the stuff outside of it as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So yeah, everything inside of our base, everywhere we're going to want our people to work. So oh, I may as well uh, allow this area over here. You know what? This whole place is fine. And then I'm going to allow this little mining job area. And then we're going to go into assignment. No, not assignment. Schedule. And we're going to put everyone in an allowed area. So now the only places they're going to go are places within this allowed work area. And one of the things, and I think I've mentioned it before in this Let's Play, people will walk. They can walk through anywhere to get anywhere. So our pawns can walk to over here, even though this is not part of their allowed area. So um, this should prevent people from wandering around quite as much. I think before the video started, I actually tweaked the home area um, so that we only I'm only homing the actual rooms that I care to be cleaned and then the outer walls currently so that they can be they'll be repaired if anything happens. Um, we won't do any firefighting outside of the home area. We won't do any cleaning outside of the home area. The cleaning is quite good because then what it meant is in my work, I was able to tell, set everyone to a higher cleaning priority um, and it won't waste too much time. We'll just keep our base neat, which is good. If there is a fire, we will need to home the area around the fire that we want to fight. But I'm trying to minimize how much random extra walking and stuff people are doing. Um, are you... Oh, yeah, no, you're still not connected. Listen, Fob, I know you're sleeping. Come over here and build this, please. Yeah, brush that, and it turned out that doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'm still batteries, sure, but... I'm building power conduits. I want these power conduits. Wait, is that one going to do anything? Yeah, yeah, because it'll connect. Yes. There we go. Now our grid is unified again. Okay, great. And then we might rebuild the solar panel, but I'm actually wondering about, or sorry, wind turbine. Um, I might just get a second geothermal going. There was, okay, there's way down there. Yeah, I remember being very annoyed, actually, at the lack of near geothermal. So there's chem fuel over here, which we're not currently going to bring in because it's not in our allowed area. What I can do, though, is um, I, can, I can allow that area, or I can just allow some people I could I could allow everyone in fact to go outside the base especially if there's a high priority hall going on which might not be bad like I've, I've done it before we're like you know what it's quite nice to have high priority hall now sometimes you don't again you know people spend all this time going around the base uh or outside and things like that to haul things but right now they can't so now they're just high priority hauling things indoors and if I temporarily change the allowed work area or uh changes that they can go unrestricted then things will change over there uh, I guess you're a night owl. NJ, I guess you could have this schedule, which I still like. There's there's certainly a lot more we could do with the schedule, but I'm going to leave that as is for now. We could go biphasic and things. Especially, uh, so I don't like biphasic in my normal bases because I'm kind of loosey-goosey about where people go. And I, So biphasic means two sleeps per day. Basically two 12-hour days. Um, but when I'm roaming all over the map, then it's really inefficient for them to run back and sleep and then run back out again and da 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 but if they're they're kept to a relatively small area where they're never gonna have to walk far to go from their work site to their bed and vice versa, then it makes a lot of sense. The idea being um, people, you, you, you schedule two sets of sleep and two sets of recreation per day. So your people are always in a good mood, and, you know, if there's a raid that comes. Because if a raid comes right when, right before everyone's supposed to go to bed, they're all tired uh, or right before, you know, right before their next recreation period, so they haven't been recreated for a while, and they're generally gonna be miserable. So this is something that um, the biphasic uh, uh, schedule helps deal with, but I'm not gonna bother with it right yet. It does keep, make, it makes sure people are more happy when critical things happen. So Darcy, yeah, going around cleaning. I mean, I could just keep Darcy on the, the one clean over here, because she is less likely to be busy compared to everyone else. 
Maybe I'll keep the hall there, but yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll do something like this. Oh, the other thing I did, you can see I've enabled the research on everyone. I'm going to, part of my plan to go like a little bit more hardcore and speed things up. With the lesser area, I want to queue up fewer things. I want to get end up with more people who are idlers um, regularly. And I just want to throw down some extra research stations. I don't think I'm going to do the fancy ones. I'm just going to have a room somewhere that is lower end research stations for the extra people. Can I limit this to certain people? No. That actually is a little annoying. Because I think what will happen when someone's trying to do research, they will grab the best research station first. I would be a little annoyed if someone grabbed it before Vort, who's our actual proper researcher. But I guess that's not going to happen very often. So it's probably not a huge deal. But I could do a special... I could make this a special zone that only Vort's allowed to go into. Slash, um... Oh no, Darcy can research as well. So then maybe slash LeBray, since she's never going to steal the research station, since she can't research. See, Darcy is idle right now. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just trying to decide what space to build it in. And it's not like we don't have construction to do right now. So I actually might want to not work on the extra research base right this second. Not until everything here has been rebuilt. Bob is probably busy on... Are you hauling uranium? Right, which is fine. Being brought there. Insect meat rotted away in storage. Oh, yeah, I forgot our freezer's full. So insect meat um, is... Uh, our humans don't like to eat insect meats. But... What I should do is I should add a make kibble job. Top priority. Do forever. And what I like to do with this... Turn off all meat, because you need to use some meat for kibble. But if we end up with any human meat or insect meat... These are both things my humans won't like to eat but my animals won't care. So I can put a forever kibble job on here, convert all the insect meat to that, which will prevent us from having to use the regular meat for the kibble jobs. Although with the insect meat rotting away, we'd have to be pretty quick to get around to it. Who's our cook again? Paolo, you're making a sculpture right now. Well, let me prioritize butchering here. Cause yeah, we may as well use it. It's not the end of the world if it rots away. Like I don't actually care that much, but we may as well try to kibbleify some of it and then you know we don't have to use something more valuable later on but yeah the, the problem continues to be i got way too much stuff but we are trying to manage it Let's see, we are we are flatten the landing on the wealth which is nice and yeah, we got that infestation event so i'm hoping now we can't get an infestation here. Theoretically, I don't know, maybe it's only enclosed. Like, this is under Overhead Mountain, but it's not enclosed. I wonder if they can't spawn here. That's a, hold on. That's something I didn't realize. Maybe that explains a few things. If I close this in, this would probably become the bait spot for infestations to spawn, which would be fine. I'm just gonna make sure that I hadn't accidentally selected another heater and reset their temperature to a wrong spot at somewhere along the way. I'll probably bring these down. Um, I think they only get the Slept in the Cold debuff if it goes under 16. I think 16 is fine. I think 15 gives Slept in the Cold. So I often will set all my heaters to 16 or maybe 17 for a little bit and an extra buffer. Um, sometimes 18 because I like 18. And actually, that's an even better buffer. But that way, they don't have to work quite as hard because they default to 21. It's like, well, we don't really need it to be at a 21. We can save a little bit of power. Interesting that they're doing repairs. <gasps> Do we not have any wood inside our base? I don't know. I was going to say, building is a higher priority than this. We don't have any wood inside of our base. I do have this area here um, that finally figured out. So they're, they're, every time a tree gets fully mature, it will be auto-chopped over here for a trickle of wood in. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a chop wood command in here. Hey, there's nothing in there. Any over here? A little bit. Now, these are not necessarily fully grown trees. There we go. A little bit of wood. I mean, I suppose I could be making bed and things out of other materials at this point. They would be nice. We do have some marble. Marble chest table sounds nice. And I believe it'll have higher beauty. Uh, we can compare. Um... So, okay, our wood ones over here have four beauty. If we make them out of marble, six beauty. Well, that's hardly anything. It's quite a bit more valuable. I mean, it's not flammable, but... I mean, maybe, maybe I'll do it anyway. 
How about dining chairs? Um, do I have cloth? Can I make the comfy chairs? I do have some cloth. Let's make cloth armchairs. They're more comfy. Seems nice to me as well. I might keep the beds out of wood for now. I mean, it's not like we can't get more wood. And I just have to make sure to reassign people out of our barracks over here to their individual bedrooms. Once that comes up. Yeah, you got torn down as well. Okay, 10th of April, May. Good. Oh, we need to build those. Yeah, I guess we were out of wood for a little while. There we go. Let me check my work area. Oh, this wasn't covered. There we go. First of all, let me do that. Let me do this. None of this is too far away from my base. You know, near near the doors, basically, I'm okay with. So this is all quite close to a lot of our doors. suppose I could expand a little bit more there. Yeah, and there's actually some materials, uh, some silver sitting around there. And I can clear this, because that's all been collected. So I can remove that. So yeah, basically, want a radius around the house. There we go. Chopping a few trees. I don't know exactly how much wood we need and how many trees that means we need to chop, but we'll see. I have a ridiculous amount of raw silver. What we need is a merchant here so I can convert that silver into something more useful while simultaneously managing our wealth a little bit. Ah, see, there's the thing with jelly. It, it is appealing to people, but they can get food poisoning from it. 2%. It's not high, but it exists. Recon helmets, assault rifles... I guess you won't be doing this. You just started. I don't... Canceling. Shit, you don't get everything back. Oh, no. Canceling a job? I didn't realize that. Canceling a job is the same as deconstructing something. We don't get all the material back. Oh, I should have finished that job, but I didn't realize. I've been canceling stuff left and right, like, ever since I started playing RimWorld. Oof. Okay, that's a little bit rough. Yeah, we're going to try to maintain two full stacks of high explosive shells out here so that our mortars are ready. And yeah, having filled in this gap, I'm hoping we don't get an infestation inside. We're, I'm very happy we didn't lose anyone here. A little scared. All right, NG throwing a party. And yeah, we got an extra barrel to reinforce that as well. It's on a shelf, so it doesn't count as rotting. Plus, we do have a roof over here, but it's not indoors. But the shelf is all we need to make that not deteriorate. That silver has been brought in. Berg. Why are you so cranky, Berg? Because you missed the party? Well, you're drowsy, hungry, and in intense pain. Right, you got mechanites and food poisoning. That is actually rough there, buddy. I wonder if you should just, like, rest until healed a little bit. Oh, cued, vomiting. Yeah, yeah, you're going for a rest now. I mean, we can't do anything for food poisoning. And the mechanites, yeah, you just need tending from time to time, but then otherwise you're wandering around. Yeah, that's really rough. Starflight basics. Okay. And do I want to keep just going down this? I mean, I suppose so. Maybe, you know, hold on. Because we need a bunch of stuff for this. Let me just grab the auto cannon turret and the uranium slug turret just in case we want to incorporate that into our defenses. So yeah, launching the ship is very desperate. It takes 15 days to charge up and we will get attacked a lot during the 15 days. I have started loading up a ship before and then lost the game because I didn't realize how brutal it was going to be. And the answer is very. Oh, yeah, this is, oh, these are granite chunks. Actually, oh, I can cancel the granite chunk hauling. Well, I mean, I suppose it's still looking to get moved out of there. It's still mostly doing limestone as my tough rock, limestone and marble, because marble is pretty. Um, granite is tougher, but I think we had a lot more limestone around, which is why I was sort of standardizing on that. Let's see. All right. Fort doing your research. Mm-hmm. Darcy idle, but that's not to be unexpected. Question is more like the constructors here. Yeah, but you're just hauling, so you're still not doing construction. So we're still out of wood, is what you're telling me. Medium psychic drone. Wow, that's going to lead to some bad moods for a little while. That's, that's unappealing. Uh, is this not in our work area, I'm assuming? Oh, it is. I'm surprised. Why are my deconstructors not deconstructing that, then? That seems odd. 
I just this is just bugging me. I want to square it off. And then if there is anything to cut in this area, please do that. And a dead bear over there. What the hell killed you? Oh, grizzly bear versus timber wolf. And then you eventually died to blood loss. Oh, all right. Yeah, Berg, yeah, that, oh, Berg, that's not going to help you. This medium psychic drone. I'm wondering about temporarily putting you in a coma or hitting you with some anesthetics. You know what? I'm going to do that. Anesthetize. Go here. We're just going to put you to, into a little nap for a couple of days. Uh, okay, you're actually asleep now, which is great, because you can't break while you're asleep. Oh, transport pod crash. Sappy. It's Dar Darcy's father. And they are from an enemy faction, so we can capture them. No real health problems. Misogynist is annoying. But, it's, I mean, there'll be more social fights and stuff. It's not great. But it's hardly a game breaker. Quick sleeper is pretty useful. Those are halfway useful um, applicants. Don't, I don't think we really care about animals. Um, we, we have exactly one, um, cook, which is Paolo, but Paolo can do other things. We could free that up, and Constructor's not bad. I think we are gonna capture Sappy. Do I have a... I don't have a prisoner bed currently. No! Yes, I do. This room. That's right. Um, I'm gonna do just for a tick. I'm just gonna unrestrict everyone for just short term, because there might be some stuff outside the base they can take care of when they get up. And then I'll just have Honey come over here, just because I didn't think that was a work area anyway. I'm like, oh, I can set a temporary work area, but I'll just open up everyone for a little bit, give them a chance to, if they need to grab some random stuff on the map that I've missed, that I don't normally want to do, but we've got some peace times. Well, when was our last, oops, when was the last major event? Our last major event was the Simpsons Station on day, say, 119. Okay, we should have a few days still before we get the next major event depending on how that was timing because there's a cassandra which is our storyteller has an off period and an on period during the on period is when she can send major does major events at you and she can send two back to back um like a day or two apart we clearly didn't get two back to back there um i just don't know when the like when it switches from the on time to the off time again and when the cycle restarts but Theoretically, I think we could get it sort of kind at any time now. Although I would still suspect a few days of grace period. Yeah, we can bring in that. Yeah, we can bring in this for now. If we were short on steel, which we are not. Um, eh, I mean, we don't have an infinite amount of steel. I suppose what I could do is just... Ooh, bulk good. Nice. I could flag the steel slag to be hauled, but just, you know, leave it outside of the work area, generally speaking. Okay, we have ourselves our prisoner over here. We have to do the thing I always forget to do, which is actually set you to recruit. 13 resistance isn't bad. That's nice to see. And how he's still our chief chatter upper. So, if we go and find Douglas in that mess, let's see what we can do with the bulk goods trader over here. Um, not really. I don't think we need to sell the cattle. Although we could... Because, you know, yeah, we've got a couple of bulls. I could sell you as a spare bull. Um, And, you know what? Maybe I'll sell this cow as well. Although we have tons of silver. I'm just assuming we're going to be buying a bunch of stuff. But maybe that's not the case. Actually, let me cancel this over here. Because we do have a ridiculous amount of silver. Let's see here. Uh, I could sell insect meat, which wouldn't be terrible. You know, I'm going to buy some chocolate. Some people can eat some chocolate. It should be good to them. Um, rice corn... The insect jelly is worth a ton. Like, that's the thing. We've got a bunch of money right now. Do I want more chem fuel? Well, yes, actually. So, we are producing chem fuel currently to try to... to we want chem fuel around to be able to make our explosives. I'll buy neutromine for drugs, all your components. Yeah, we're going to try to we're gonna try to cycle a bunch of money here. Uh, I could even just buy steel. I'm going to buy more reinforced barrels. I'm going to sell random bits of clothing. That I'm happy with. Yeah, if no one's wearing that and that, I'll keep two normal flak helmets. Uh, we'll sell the statue. we keep the bedrolls. Okay. And so I will, in fact, sell you this insect jelly. Okay. So yeah, we're offloading a ton of uh, plain out money. 
for things that might be a bit more useful. We don't, we don't need this much chem fuel. But... But that's okay. And we clearly won't be making some for a while. I could toggle this off, but 170 watts... I should. If you're micromanaging, what you should do is turn off anything that's not going to be working right now. I'm actually not sure if it can still break down if it's turned off. That... I, no, because then if we can save ourselves a component from a breakdown, that would be kind of nice. The thing is, like, I tend to forget that I've turned it off, so I tend to leave, like, all my smelters on all the time, you know, which is not great. I should really have some smelt weapons and apparel jobs in here. We are, from this point on, we are going to smelt any weapon that is awful or poor and can be smelted. Um, and apparel, we are going to smelt any smeltable apparel that would be tattered. In fact, I'm going to go here, and I don't even call, care about the quality. There we are. Put some extra jobs in here that might help to keep our inventory a little bit neater. Yeah, fob. I mean, the break wrist, this, the psychic drone, there's going to be a lot of people who are on the edge of a break, unfortunately. Rebuffing. Slept in the cold. That's interesting. I mean, that room's fine. This room's currently okay. Are this... Oh, there's no heaters over here! Adoy. Okay. Well... Um, I'm going to do that. I'll try to remember to do a, um a vent there later on. And we'll just put a heater in one of these rooms. I mean, I... Yeah, no, that's fine. Because it will be better at spreading over here later. There's no bed in here yet, but that's okay. I mean, I guess I could not worry about this. I clearly want to rebuild a bed, though. You know what? This is a great place. Let's put in a bed in here. Just a single bed this time. Oh, although the bed has to actually be adjacent to the... Uh, end table to work. I suppose what I could do to make it easier if I decide to put a double bed in here later, I can put this here because then I can build a double bed there. It looks a little bit dumb, but it's actually a lot handier. Could have considered that sooner. So we don't have enough recreation uh, variety. We don't have cerebral play. Right, because our chess table is broken. We don't have television, music. Food consumption fun would have been from uh, the, the insect jelly. So we don't have that anymore. Chemical consumption. I guess we don't have those. Okay, are we growing any psychite? Yeah, we are. Right, and we did unlock the psychoid brewing, which is now psychite tea. And you can, I guess you can do this forever. There's no reason for us to keep psychoid leaves around unless we're not doing a drug industry in this game, are we? Oh, we were. Let me cancel the yayo, which was just a money job. And instead, we're just going to make Psychite tea, which we can also sell the tea, but we can have our own people take the tea. Um, I believe you can take Psychoid tea every two days and not get sick. Not get... Um, yeah, safe dose interval is two days. Um, there's always a chance you get addicted. There's no chance that you randomly overdose. So I don't remember if we did this already, but we're going to go into our drug policy over here. We will allow people to take Psychoid tea every two days um, if their mood is below, say, 50%. There you go. If their mood's under 50%, then they're allowed to take psychoid tea whenever, psychite tea whenever they want. I think, I think it makes them happy. Hmm. I mean, it counts as a recreation. Chemical, um, chemical consumption recreation. Social drug. I mean, it probably gives them a health, like, a temporary health thing of like, oh, I'm buzzed right now and I'm pleased. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in here, folks. Thanks a lot for watching another episode. And I'm going to see you next time as we continue to attempt to push forward and things. See you then. Bye-bye.